eyes. And uh, yesterday, Reverend Oshifeso really told us, he spoke the word. He showed us that one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot arise is because they lack courage. That no matter the vision, the idea you have, if you lack courage, you only have it in your mind, you will not be able to carry it out. Praise the Lord. But today from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 and 10, the life of a man called Jabez is a popular man in the Bible. You know, we are just going to see one of the reasons too why a lot of people want to arise, but they find it difficult to. You know, to arise is to stand up. To arise is to take steps. To arise is to uh, not to not to be stagnant. You know, is to move away from where you are. Hallelujah. So let's look at First Chronicles chapter four, nine and ten. It's on screen. It says, "Now Jabez." Let's look at the screen right now. Children, game is over. Game over. Only that go and drop that phone. It says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Look at it. Uh, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Now let's read the next verse, verse 10. Only two verses we are reading. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my fairy three, that your hands would be with me, and that you will keep me from evil, that I may, I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Hallelujah. Now, the first verse gave a summary of the birth of Jabez, the events that was happening in the life of Jabez. He showed us Jabez and his problem. Verse 9 shows us Jabez and his problem. And what was the problem of Jabez? The Bible says he was more honorable than his brethren. But because the mother gave birth to him, going through a lot, she went through a lot of labor to give birth to him. So the, the mother now called him, tagged him bitterness. He called Now, and Jabez could not live his life without experiencing bitterness. Now, listen, honor was the honorable person is a respectable person. But for him to be honored and each day, he could not but experience pain. Every day of his life, he was experiencing pain. Every day of his life, he was experiencing pain. Every day. Now, and if you look at the life of Jabez clearly, you will know that he didn't like that pain. Now, that was why he prayed. Abi, we are still going to come there. So it shows us that a person that wants to arise may not arise if that person has what we call spiritual issues. A person that wants to arise may not be able to arise if that person has spiritual issues that he or she did not address. Now, in the case of Jabez, it was his biological mother that used the words of her mouth to limit his destiny. His mother called him bitterness, and it was so. Now, in the life of I, I, I took time to read scriptures. I read Mark chapter 9, 17 and 18. The Bible talks about a man. The Bible says he was robbed of his speech by his spirit. He wants to speak. That's Mark 9, 17 and 18. But a spirit prevented him from speaking. He wanted to speak. But a spirit did not allow him to. Who felt sorrow? Now, Sherry and Itobani spiritual problem. Be life a man really. If you have if a person has spiritual problem, you notice that such a person will be trying physically, but his trials will not be equal, will not manifest in his result life. Hello? His trials will not uh, uh, manifest in his result life. I was going through the commentary, you know, I love football a little bit. I was going through the commentary of the World Cup game between Morocco and uh, France. And the football analyst said, when it comes to ball possession, the Moroccans had a advantage. They held on to the ball more than who? The, the, the opponent, France. But it didn't show in their game. They didn't win. They eventually lost to France, I think 2-0. Now, they had the power of possession, but those ones were scoring goals. So when a person has a spiritual problem, he will have everything that could make him succeed. 
If we have everything physically that will make everyone to say, this one, this one, let's forget, this man's case is settled. But his case will not be settled. It will look as if everything will be all right for him, but still, he will not have the result he desire. I always say it, for such people with spiritual problems, their 2 plus 2 doesn't get to 4. Their 2 plus 2 is always minus 1. Then people will begin to wonder, upon your giftings, now look at the life of Jabez, a man full of honor, but there was a tag in his life that limited him. Now, do you know that, look at this example in, uh, uh, in the book of um, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, now show me, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 5. I want to show you something, an example of a spiritual problem. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's be fast about it. I want us, everybody to see it. Is, is there somebody? In the cubicle, First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 5. The Bible talks about Hannah being barren because the Lord shot her womb. So her barrenness was not physical. Her barrenness was spiritual. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 5. I want every eyes to say it. Her barrenness, so, which means that they did everything naturally. Let's look at it together. But to Hannah, wow, okay, he would give a double portion for he loved Anna. But what happened? Although the Lord has what? Closed her womb. So which means that everything naturally was done. But Anna could not be pregnant. Nobody could explain why physically. Now that was the case of Jabez. And you know the theme of this convention is arise. Some people say, Pastor, move a D-Day. But koye me. Me, more recently, me, she le D-Day. But pastor, Koyemi, if you are that kind of a person in this meeting tonight, this meeting is for you. That I don't understand, pastor. Some will say, I'm gifted. Some will say, I'm talented. Some will even say, pastor, I have a calling. Monique. But go boom, continue on she. Koyo. No, look at this. If you are like that here, the Lord will intervene in your matter in Jesus' name. Now, let's look at three things that Jabez did for him to have testimonies so that you and I can have testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, he wanted a much better life. He wanted a much better life. Jabez wanted a much better life. Now, don't forget, the Bible says he was more honorable than his brethren. He would have been satisfied with that. Some, some other people would be satisfied. Like the message I'll be preaching tomorrow morning now, I will show you why a lot of people cannot arise. Because they easily, they are, they easily adapt. It, that's exactly what's happening, happening in Nigeria. If what is happening in Nigeria happened in some countries, they will have, there will have been a, a, a nationwide protest. The, uh, uh, a government came into the nation. At the time it came in, a bag of rice was 8,500 naira. If our song were selling for 7,000. And the government came up and said, we are going to close the border. We are going to produce our own rice. Our own rice will be cheaper. And now we are buying a bag of our own rice for 38, 39. Some are even saying 42. And you trust Nigerians. I'm a Lanon. That's the problem we have. Now, a government that came in and met fuel at 65 naira. And just like play like play, today, as at today, fuel is how much? 250 naira per the same liter of 65 naira eight years ago. And you see, see every Nigerian will say, mm, is it not better than we don't have it at all? But to, for Jabez, he wanted a much better life. I want to tell you this truth. If you don't want a better life, a much better life, you can't know if you have a spiritual problem. It was because he wanted a much better life that he realized that, wait, wait, why am I trying and it's not working? Am I communicating? It was because he wanted a much better life. I wrote it down this way. He wanted a much better life. That was why he realized he had a situation if he had been satisfied with the level of honor he had as a family champion, he wouldn't have known 
his problem at all. That's, see, one of the reasons why a lot of people don't know that they have spiritual problem is because they are satisfied with where they are. They are not doing anything extra. They are not trying to move. You are in your one room with your eight children plus you and your husband making ten. You see, as long as we don't step on ourselves, there is no problem. But because Jabez wanted a much better life, he realized that something is wrong with me. That was the first thing. That's why you too, for you to know if there's things are okay or wrong, why not aspire for a much better life? Why not desire to begin to try? And I know some of you are trying. You have started selling. You have been trying all kinds of business. It looks as if nothing is happening. It's a clear sign that there is a problem spiritually. But in this meeting, God will give you a solution. I wrote here the reason several people do not know they have a problem is because they are not aspiring at all. We used to have, I, I, I used to know of a brother like that. Two of them. Let me tell you that life's experience briefly. There was somebody in those days, oh, his name was Godwin. This brother used to teach people to go and face Waek and Jam. And everybody he has taught, Godwin will teach you how to pass Waek. Godwin will teach you how to pass GC. People were sharing testimonies. Godwin will tell you, let me teach you how they said jam questions. People were passing jam, gaining admission. But do you know that every single time Godwin made an attempt to face GC, he failed. He tried Waek, he failed. He tried jam, he failed. You know what Godwin now decided? He went into a cadre riding. And whenever people come with difficult questions, Godwin will solve it. He will tell them how to go and answer. So he was friends of lecturers. But he was just an Okada rider. That's a sign that there is a problem somewhere. Praise the Lord. Second thing that Jabez realized that made him to arise. Number two, he realized that his problem was not something he could undo by himself or naturally. Jabez realized that his problem was not something he could undo by himself or naturally. Do you know that so many people have not come to uh, realize that they need help? I can handle it. I was counseling a young man. That was about two weeks ago. You know, God, I, I, he, had, he had a challenge with his academics. The admission was to close by 12 midnight. And there was no money anywhere in their house. So when we, we were, my family was consulted, you know, and uh, my wife told me about it, I said, well, the day they shared the testimony that they gained admission, the Spirit of God put it in my heart that the church should pay for it. So I told them to come. So when they came, that was about two weeks ago, how much is your admission? And we said, you have paid the uh, acceptance fee, but the admission requires... 51,000, University of Illinois. But plus all the whatever, whatever, making 54. I said, okay, there's no problem. We transferred 54,000 to him. He was shocked. He prostrated. The mom was crying. And when the mom, he said, I should tell the mom to excuse. He said, sir, do you know that I have this problem? I said, what is the problem? He said, I'm talking, I, I, I will just sit down in the room, I will be talking to myself. Sir, I'm beginning to have mental disorder. He said, but the problem is that I've always been telling myself that I can handle it. I can handle it. But, sir, it's like I realize I cannot handle it. He said, I realize I cannot handle it. So he burst into tears. And I told him, I said, sir, bro, the day that you decide, you agreed that you cannot handle it, that's the beginning of your help. That the reason why this problem has been in your life is because you thought you couldn't do it. I don't need to talk to anybody. I can't do it. I said, now, for the Spirit of God to have brought you to me, I told him, I said, now, I'm all ears. If you are going to spend three hours telling me your problem, I will listen to you. Come to that point in your life that you agree that you are not something. Hello? Come to that point. Because God cannot help a man that can help himself. 
Hello? If you can help yourself, God cannot help you. So, by the time we started counseling him, I invited my wife into the counseling. He now burst into tears. We now discovered that the problem that had been in his mind is that he was always being locked inside the room right from time. He doesn't talk to anybody. He doesn't have any friend. So he always knows his problem by himself. He said and any time he, he sits down with his mom, the mom will be telling him how, how the father has hurt him. So he said, will I now share my own problem with my mommy as well? That if I share my, my mommy has enough problems. My daddy has enough problems. So I have to invite the mommy. See, don't be talking about your problem in the presence of your son again. So that he can tell you his own. Listen. Jabez realized this truth. That he has a problem that cannot be solved naturally. Hello? He realized he has a situation. So many people do not want to agree that they have a situation in their hands. They still go on in their packaging. You know so many human beings, we are good at packaging. It's okay. It's alright. I can handle it. You are doing well. Come down from that realm so that you can get help. So Jabez realized. Now, number three, the third thing he did, I'm summarizing. He realized that only God can help him solve his problems. And he went after God. I love that man. That's why in that verse 10, the Bible says, And Jabez prayed, O Badura, ah, eyon le Badura, ti o ba mokwe yolo ni konlo le ron lo wo. Jabez realized that, ah, it's only God that can help me. And he went after God. You know, there are two kinds of people on this earth. There are people that realize that God can help them, but they are not ready to serve God. And there are people that realize that God can help them and they are ready to go all out to serve him. Look at the way Jabez prayed. That's what I want to speak to us, to us this morning. I mean this evening, sorry. For you to arise, you must understand that God is the he ultimate help you need. His problems. And he... Who is preaching? Is it me or the other person? Praise the Lord. So, he realized that it's only God. And he went after God. I want to encourage everybody listening to me today. We didn't just invite you to just come and play, play, play. You know, the reason why we allow the games is for you to ease yourself from tensions of life. When we talk about tension, you know there is tension now. One chicken is about 50. They said Zatek declare that one chicken now is 15K. Somebody was telling me today. Mesuru gone. Why about kino have a time? Mesuru buy. Some bata the M fifteen thousand. And you know, so many of your parents you are looking at ah, kini eh, I want my ima wallo dream buy. Eh, she jalama wa jebai. That's why we allowed you to play games, so that you can ease yourself the tension. But don't forget that uh, it is the tension does not remove the problem. Hello. Now, but listen, who has the capacity to solve the problem? God. It's only God that can do it. Do you know that it does not cost God anything to touch somebody somewhere for you and me? If you look at 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, David sat down in his palace, a blessed man. He just said, Ah, I remember now. Jonathan. Who can I show mercy, favor to? And somebody just mentioned, there's one guy, his name is Mephibosheth. He's a crippled guy. When they went to Mephibosheth, you know what Mephibosheth said? He said, who am I? A dead dog. Not even a dog. A dead one. He said, who am I? A dead can you see that he, he, he so much rated himself as gone and gone? But God had touched somebody in the palace. God will touch somebody for you. Amen. But do you know what to make him work? What, what to make it work? Go after God. 
serve him from your heart. I gave my life to Christ at the age of 15. My wife gave her own life to Christ at the age of 11. And we kept running after Jesus since that time. Now, this year, by the grace of God, I'm 47 years old. Now, look at how many years I've been following Jesus. And I want to thank the Lord. I can say it boldly. Ah, it pays to serve God. It pays. Now, let's look at that verse 10. That verse 10. Look at what God did when Jabez turned to him. First Chronicles chapter, 9, chapter 4, verse 10. That's the last scripture I'm reading. Before I hand over the mic. Verse 10. Look at what God did in his life. Within the moment he met him, the Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. One, and enlarge my territory. Two, that your hand will be with me. Three, and that you will keep me from evil. Four, that I may not cause pain. Five, and what happened? So God granted him what he requested. God answered his prayer. Now look at Jabez, which means, I, I didn't see that part before when I've been studying this. He said that I may not cause pain, which means he used to cause pain. This man, uh, I want to remember his name, the man that sang uh, Olon was Sobe. He said when he was young, he used to cause pain. He, he now shared his experience. He said one day like this, he saw somebody bought a brown new car, not a Kumba, brown new car. And while everybody was dancing, as a young boy, on my career of of uh, nine years old, he went to gather stones and he broke the full light, the two full lights of the car. And people, they ask, when they ask him, why did you do that? He said, I don't know. He said, and the, the owner of the car said, this boy is a pain. You better go and hang him. Praise the Lord. Go after God. Is it your bag? The God we serve, listen, he's a, he's a maker of men. But the problem is that people don't want to serve him. People only want to take what he has in his hands. I can tell you, I've been serving him now 32 years. He has never failed me. We were discussing, I'm my wife, we were discussing with my children. And my, my, my wife said, Donia, I said, yes. Do you know that God has never disappointed us for once before? And it's true. Dying minutes, eh? Of maybe say, we say, look at shame is coming. Before shame, we get to the door. We will just see that a miracle will overtake it. So I want to encourage you. If you are not yet born again, give your life to Jesus. So that God can come into your life. And if you are born again, renew your covenant with him. If your fire is dying down, pick up your fire in Christ again. Let him use, let him, let him relate with him. Guide your relationship with him jealously. The God that changed the story of Jabez can change and will change your story. Amen. I have seen him change so many stories. When I say story changer, I have seen him change several stories. But see, one thing with God is this. He's not an intruder. Wherever you do invite him, he doesn't go. And he, will already, he doesn't go beyond the percentage you give him in your life. If you say, Lord, I'm only giving you 1% aspect, uh, access to my life, he will stay at 1%. If you say, Lord, I'm giving you 2 he will stay at 2 If you say, Lord, I give, my, I give my whole life, take over. He will take over your whole life, and I'm telling you, you will not regret that he took over it. Because I and my wife, we are living proofs. When I say proofs, we are living proofs that this God pays. Tell your neighbor I will serve him with the whole of my heart. You can do it better. 
I wrote here several people that, sorry, several people that uh, 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 only knows God but don't want to come after him. How do I know that they don't want to come? Some people don't want to leave sin behind. You know that the number one proof of love is sacrifice. Am I communicating? If you love something, you'll be willing to sacrifice anything. Ah, I remember those days when God called me to just come into ministry. My love for football almost took ministry away. When there is a match and there is service, ha, I will now be looking at which one do I choose. Ah, I remember when Coach Teller took that under, 30, under, uh, under 17. We had to extend our service time because the, ma the match went into penalty. It went into penalty. So I, I didn't go to, I was telling them, I'm coming. I'm coming. I must do the end of this thing. But it got to a point. God said, son, you have to make a choice. I just decided. Whoa. Well, this thing does not have eternal value. Does not add eternal value to me. It just brings pleasure for a time. And I surrender. What is that in your hands that, you, that is hindering your relationship with God? Why not surrender it? Is it one cigarette? Is it that lady that is not your wife? That girlfriend you kept somewhere? Is it that bottle of alcohol? Oh, is it like me? Maybe you love football so much that you say, well, I can't, I can't leave my football match to attend any service. Some of you, it might even be love for money. You love money so much that because you have, of your love for money, you don't have time to serve God. Do you even know that some of you is your phone? That you are always with your phone even when God is speaking in church. There are people like that. Their phone is the one standing. Because one thing with God is this. He doesn't tell you that, see, let me just use Ezekiel as an example. Ezekiel, the word that I want to speak to you now is your own. He doesn't say that. He will just keep speaking. If you lose attention and not pay focus on your own word to catch it, that's the end. And I always tell people, if you miss your word, you have missed the miracle of the season. So some, is their phone. Ah, oh, to, uh, some people, what is standing between them and their relationship with God is sleep. Some is food. They can't fast. Some cannot pray without ah, sleep. Sleep will not allow. Do you know that to some of you, it is even some things that you don't count to be anything. Some it is fashion. Some it is greed. Their desire for more has not allowed them. But you make up your mind. That no matter what, because the Bible says, I'm summarizing, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the Bible says, see, every other thing shall what? Be added to you. Every other thing is an addition. Marriage, addition. Money, addition. But the reason why people are praying for the things that is supposed to be added to them is because they are not serving God well. In those days, we grew up in the barrack. How do you know what they call addition? I understood addition by one a Usa woman that sells Akara in the whole of uh, Oketunu, those, those years. I'm talking about the early 80s. Anytime I, if we are sent to buy Akara and we, we pay, the mama will say, I don't put Jara. You know you didn't pay for Jara? I don't know if you understand Jara. In, in Yoruba, we say, Ati Fenisi. She your man somewhere in me. Aki somewhere in me. Only people in Shini, Emma, why Joba Olon? Ati Udo Dore. But today, I want to 
awon yin n to ye kan se yen won fi le serve god from your heart i'm sharing it with good example to you how did god give let me close my bible so that i will not continue preaching how did god give hannah a child it was when hannah sought the kingdom hannah came to church she knelt down and she said oh god if you can give me a son i will give you back she was not she was no longer selfish this time she was ready for god and god said her heart is ready open her womb i want to ask you will you go after god shema sin addressing i want to wa ninu aye awon gan wa bon se ma wa pada sinu christi ko si ngan kon be mo there's nothing there anymore now you that are closer devote yourself bishop tdj said he was smoking and he was still preaching nobody knew he said until one day his father in the lord just came up with a stick of cigarette and said td jakes will you allow this to stand in between you and the plan of god for your life he said he made up his mind today i want to give you one minute to pray you know yourself what is not allowing you to serve god we are in a generation where you see people in our days when we were young as young Christians, we pray all night. But today's generation, they browse all night. Phone we shan. They browse all night. And I, I'm thanking God today. The prayers I've prayed those years is what is making way for me today. Now, if you are browsing now, excuse me, what will make way for you tomorrow? Now, bow down your heads. Let us pray. In one minute, say, Lord, help me to serve you. I want to serve you. Lord, just help me. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. Where are the coordinators? Now, if you know anything that you know is standing between you and your service to God, mention that thing. Piluwa. And in case you want to give your life to Jesus, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse my name from the book of death and have it written in the book of life. Today I confess that I'm born again. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Help me that on this journey, I will not fall back. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Are you blessed? Blessed? Let's welcome the coordinator.